What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys a new homebrew app that was released by 0x199, which has just come out in the past few days called Orbis Patches. It's basically a companion homebrew app for orbispatches.com, which is a website you can go to to download your retail game updates. Game updates for retail um, copies of your games, not fake package games or fake package updates. This is specifically for retail updates. And it's basically a companion homebrew app that can connect to the Open Orbis patches uh, servers and download game updates directly to your PS4 without having to download the, the update files to your computer and then installing them with the, you know, the remote package installer or the debug settings. So this is just going to make things so much more convenient when it comes to downloading game updates because before, what we had to do before then was we had to go to websites like ps4database.io or Orbis Patches and we'd have to basically search for the game and then find an update. But oftentimes the update requires a higher firmware version than the firmware you're on on your jailbroken PS4. So if you install the latest update, you're not going to be able to run the game, which is a problem. So trying to find an older copy of the update is difficult. You can't just um, download the updates from PSN because you need to be on a higher firmware and even then all the updates for games on PSN, they only have the latest update available on PSN, which obviously isn't going to run in most cases on an older firmware. So that's a problem. So you'd go to a website like this, you would see if it has any older patches available, um, and then you could download like an older update. And But the problem is, of course, all the updates that are larger than four gigabytes come in four gigabyte parts. So you have to download all the different update files, all the different parts one by one, and then you have to merge them back into one file again using some software on your computer so that you can then install it with the debug settings via a USB drive or something like that. Or technically you could use the remote package installer to send all of the different parts one by one without having to merge them. But even then that requires you having to have the whole remote package installer set up and having a good package sender app that can actually send multiple parts. So yeah, it's not really been the most convenient solution, but now we have a convenient way to get retail game updates downloaded directly to the PS4. So let me just show you real quick how to get this set up. So you're going to download the Homebrew app, which is a package file, of course, and we're just going to copy that over to our USB drive. And you're going to want to put it in the root of a USB drive, not inside any folders. And obviously you want to make sure that that USB drive is formatted in XFAT format or FAT32 format so it's detected by the PS4. And then we can eject that and plug it into our PS4. Okay, and once you're on the PS4, you're going to obviously head into the internet browser and you're going to want to go to your exploit host and run Mira. Now, technically this homebrew app, I believe, is meant to work on all jailbreakable firmwares like 5.05, 6.72, I haven't got it working on 7.02, so not sure what the issue is there. I've only tried it on one PS4 on 7.02, and it just gets a black screen when I launch it. So not entirely sure what the issue is there. Maybe we'll get some more information on that. If, if it requires an update to work on 7.02, then I will update the download link in the description when a new version of the app comes out that works on 7.02. So for now, I'm just on 6.72 just to show you the app. It should, I believe it is meant to work on 7.02. So if there is a problem, I'm sure there will be an update to fix it um, to get it to work on 7.02. Um, but anyway, so for now, we're just, we'll just use 6.72 to demonstrate it. So we're, we're going to want to run Mira and I'm going to run Mira unofficial because on 6.72, the regular version of Mira, which I'm not entirely sure why, but the regular version of Mira doesn't enable the debug settings anymore. So that's kind of random. Um, but Mira Unofficial will. You cannot run Hen because the Homebrew app requires Mira. It uses a lot of the built-in functions in Mira, so it does not work with Hen on its own. So you do need to make sure you're running Mira and not the Homebrew enabler. So we're going to go down to the debug settings, game package installer, install the package file on the USB stick. It's only a six megabyte file, so it shouldn't take long. And there we go. All right, so I've got a couple of games installed here. Now, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Modern Warfare, these are fake package games. So I actually don't really have any retail games to show you right now, apart from Advanced Warfare, which is on here. And Advanced Warfare currently is on 1.00, the base version, no updates installed. So I'm going to run the patch installer 
Orbis from orbispatches.com. Okay, so the reason I was getting a black screen was because I was running Mira Unofficial, which did work with 1.00, but I guess this new update doesn't work with Mira Unofficial, so you need to use regular Mira. So I've rebooted the console and I'm now running regular Mira, not Mira Unofficial, regular Mira. Okay, now it works. So right now to use this, this particular version, it seems that you have to run just Mira, not Mira Unofficial, regular Mira. So yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of a bit of an issue, especially when regular Mira doesn't seem to unlock the debug settings. In which case, you might have to run another payload first, like Hen or Mira Unofficial, just to install the application, then reboot, and then run regular Mira to load the application. But uh, anyway, point is, it's running as you can see right here. Now it does detect the fake package games here as you know potential a potential game you could download a patch for. But you do not want to download the patches for uh, fake package games because they will not work. So if you're trying to, you know, patch a fake package game with a retail update, it's not going to work. So you'll go through all the trouble of downloading that big patch file only for it not to install on your game in the end. So make sure that you are downloading the patches for a retail copy of a game. The only retail copy I have on this PS4, as I said, was Advanced Warfare. So the good thing about this is it tells you what game version your games are currently on. You can then select the game and then it gives you the available patches. So we've got 1.23, which is runnable on 5.05 .05, and 1.24, which is runnable on 6.72 or higher. So you can select the patch that you want to install and then it will install it for you. Now, the other good thing is it also tells you which patches are not runnable on your firmware version. So this is a really nice feature. Hopefully this isn't something that's hard coded for 6.72. Hopefully this will this will work on like 5.05 .05 and 7.02 as well. Um, hopefully it actually d reads the firmware that you're currently on and then compares it to the firmware that these patches require in order to run, uh, which is what I think it does, what I hope it does, because then it will work on other firmware versions as well and it will be accurate so that uh, what this should essentially do is if I try to install 01.14, it won't allow me to actually run the game with that patch installed, any of these red ones, because they require a higher firmware than 6.72 in order to run them. So that way I know that the latest firmware I can run or the latest patch for this game that I could run on my console is 01.13 and not any higher than that. So that way you don't accidentally install a patch that's too high for the firmware that you're on and then it won't allow you to run the game. So that way you can only download the patches that are actually going to run, all the ones in green that will actually run on your firmware version. So that is a really handy feature right there. So as an example, we'll just select Advanced Warfare since this is the only retail copy of a game I have installed right now. And we'll select patch 1.24. 1, 1 and we will say, are you sure you want to install this patch? Please note the patch installer servers or so the patch installer serves retail patches which are incompatible with fake package games. So yeah, it's just giving you giving you that warning right there. Connection to PlayStation.net was denied. Why, why do you require a connection to PlayStation.net? It's probably telling me that because I have alleys of DNS that are blocking connections to Nintendo's ser Nintendo, Jesus, they're blocking connections to Sony servers. So anyway, set up internet connection using LAN cable. We'll just do an easy setup so that uh, we just have the normal DNS of my router, which will stop me blocking connections to Sony servers. Patch installer. Here we go. So we're going to run this. Update later. Okay, so now I'm not blocking connections to Sony servers. Didn't realize it was required, but it is required to not be blocking Sony servers, I guess, in order to use this. So yeah, anyway, back where we were, we're going to select Advanced Warfare 1.24. Continue installation. And there we go. It's been added to download. So that's how it works. Pretty straightforward. Um, just make sure you're not blocking Sony servers with the DNS. If you are worried about removing the DNS addresses that block Sony servers, uh, bear in mind, as long as you've got the disable updates payload running and you've unchecked all the boxes and the settings for automatic downloads, then if it does download a system update to your console when you're not aware, then it shouldn't be able to install it. So you should be fine. So yeah, as you can see, we are downloading the update file right here. So yeah, it makes total sense why, I don't know why, what I was thinking, 
it makes total sense why you require a PSN connection because ultimately all the updates you're downloading are from PSN. They are all being stored on PSN servers. These are not updates that you're downloading from Orbis patches. Orbis patches is just like a middleman between you and Sony servers that kind of indexes all of the all of the files. It has the links to you know the different updates on Sony servers, and it's just kind of acting as a kind of pass through for you to um, to connect you to the right file that you're downloading from Sony servers. So you are actually downloading from Sony servers not really from orbispatches.com. Orbispatches.com is just directing you to the correct file on Sony servers to download. So that explains why you need to have a connection to PSN. For some odd reason, I was thinking they were hosting the patches themselves, which they're not because that's, I think, one of the reasons why some other site got a CND or something. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, point is, it's working as you can see here. It's downloading the update file and this is much, much easier than having to download it on the computer, which would come in two parts because it's over four gigabytes and having to merge them, put them on a USB and install them or set up the remote package installer so you can send both parts via the remote package installer. This is just easier now. You just run the Homebrew app now that it's installed. Just run the Homebrew app, select the game you want to download an update for, select the update that you want to install and it will automatically start downloading it to the PS4 right here. Okay so now that it's installed I can head back to the actual game here, go to options, information and as you can see we're now updated to version 1.24 so it does work, makes things so much easier now you just select the update you want and it will download straight to your console and of course another feature that this has is the ability to delete the patch as well so if you go back into the patch installer you can see it detects that the game is now on 1.24 but I can select it, select the delete currently installed patch and we'll just say delete. And up until this point I think the only way you could actually just delete the patch without reinstalling the whole game was to use the remote package installer. But as you can see here with this homebrew app we've now uninstalled the update and it's back to 1.00. So yeah, that's basically it guys. That is the patch installer from Orbis Patches from 0x199. It's a pretty awesome homebrew app. It's a great utility app that just makes things so much easier uh, when it comes to installing patches and deleting patches. Definitely one to have on your PS4. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.